Hi, I'm Dr. Simon Fry, the consultant in clinical neurophysiology. Welcome to my YouTube channel and to this explanatory video where I'll be starting a small series trying to explain what we understand by epilepsy. The first thing that I should say is that unfortunately there has been a lack of a consensus or united view as to how we can precisely define it. However, at least conceptually, we can think about it in the following useful way as a susceptibility to recurrent epileptic seizures. What do I mean by all of this? The brain is a remarkable structure. It contains billions of neurons which network with other parts of the brain as well in order to transmit their signals in a timely and orderly fashion. Sometimes there can be too much excitation of the neurons, in other words they're firing off too much and that can lead to seizures. And sometimes the normal checks and balances which inhibit um, too much signal, too much excitation, uh, can also become impaired as well. And when this occurs, this can also lead to seizures occurring. And so, simply put, sometimes there can be too much firing off of the neurons and sometimes there can be too little inhibition of the neurons and this can lead to a recurrent susceptibility to having seizures. What do we mean by a susceptibility to recurrent seizures? So the ILAE, the International League Against Epilepsy, have provided the following definitions. Either, number one, having two unprovoked seizures more than 24 hours apart. We know that a person who has had a single seizure has a 35% risk of having a further seizure in the next five years. If they have had a second seizure too, then the risk actually goes up to at least 75%. And so this is a important predictor of having further seizures. So if a person has had two or more seizures, then they are at high risk of having yet further seizures in the future. The ILAE now also recognize a second group of people who have had a single seizure, but have got risk factors for going on to having further seizures of at least 60%. In these scenarios, they will also be recognized as having epilepsy even without having had the actual second seizure. An example that they provide is a person who has had a stroke and a number of weeks down the line have had a first seizure. We know from follow-up studies that such persons are at risk of having further seizures and those, that risk is sufficiently high for them to be designated as having epilepsy. There is a third group of people that um, can have a single seizure and still have a diagnosis of epilepsy is where an epilepsy syndrome has been identified via the clinical constellation and investigation to, uh, that go to support it. Coming back to the conceptual framework for epilepsy, so that is a susceptibility to recurrent epileptic seizures. What did I mean by epileptic seizures? So we know that for a variety of reasons, people can have a seizure, but that it is not epileptic per se. For example, if someone has got a poor circulation to their brain and they've had, let's say, an arrhythmia, so their heart's not been beating in a orderly way and it's not beaten for a certain amount of time, there's been a lack of blood going to the brain, the brain becomes anoxic, it gets a lack of oxygen, that can lead to a person having a tonic-clonic seizure, for example, but that's only due to a lack of oxygen going to the brain. It's not due to an intrinsic problem with overexcitation or under inhibition. And so that would not be classed as an epileptic seizure. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about some of the debate that is ongoing with the current definition of epilepsy. And I hope you found this useful. If you have, please do support the channel by liking, sharing and subscribing. Many thanks and looking forward to seeing you on the next video.